today on Teach Me How to Vegan. All right, let's talk about baking. Yes. So I want to say, even before we went vegan, I would bake with alternatives to egg because there was a time that I don't know, maybe it was during bird flu. I think it was that because the eggs, just the prices were going through the roof. They were so expensive. And so I found that I don't want to bake with egg. So I have been baking with egg alternatives for a very long time, Mm -hmm. even before we went vegan. And so that was just an easy, nothing changed there for me, really. Yeah, that's true. So it can still help you save money, especially with rising food Food costs. costs. Yeah. It's cheaper to do some of these alternatives. Welcome to Teach Me How to Vegan. A podcast where we explore how to switch to a vegan diet. I'm Tony, a health educator, fitness instructor, and plant-based eating program manager for Animal Protection of New Mexico. I'm Mickey, a stay-at-home homeschooling mom and vegan cook who likes to play in the kitchen. Our family stopped eating meat in 2007. And we went vegan in 2016. Now we like to share with others what we've learned. Thanks for joining us. Let's get started. Welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. Today's episode might be exactly what some of you are looking for. (laughs) As we explore living without eggs or life after eggs. Life after eggs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It could be a tough one to crack, but we're going to walk you through. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I'm just making these as I go along. Uh, Oh, I know. I I know. They They just come naturally. I know. Anyway. Like we talked about before that we were going to do an episode all about eggs Mm -hmm. because last time we talked about tofu to get people on board and up to speed with what the heck to do with tofu when you start with it. And we prefaced this episode with that because tofu is kind of our go-to for a lot of egg replacement, Mm -hmm. as you'll see later on. And also, we waited this long because much like the cheese, you know, Eggs might be the last thing to go for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. As you've shared, they were... That was my hardest. Kind of difficult for you. Yeah. I honestly didn't realize how much egg I was eating, like scrambled eggs and hard boiled eggs and whatever else, until we were in life after eggs. And I was (laughs) like, what am I going to eat for breakfast? (laughs) Yeah. And that was confirmed when we discovered... (laughs) Just, just egg. egg and we ate it like every single day yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> because yeah. it was because i'm sorry tofu scramble does is just doesn't hit the same notes for me for you and it does right. for me so yeah that's why we encourage everyone to try yeah because it might hit your notes and it might not and it might not yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> good way to put it yeah you might be in a different scale yes first we're gonna just briefly talk about why why Mm egg-free, and then talk about some main ingredients and substitutes that we use, and then talk about some recipes for common things that we used to use eggs for that we still eat and obviously don't Mm -hmm. use eggs. Yeah. And then we're going to talk a little bit about baking without eggs. Yeah. Because that's a whole thing. That's a whole thing. So real quick, just to start off, I wanted to just talk about why egg-free because... It's a little fuzzy. And some yeah. people, you know, there's even a whole movement, you know, the veg ins where people say they're vegan except for eggs. Oh, I, it's I like hadn't V-E-G-G-A-N, heard of that. V-E-G-G-A-N, mm-hmm. you know. Or some people are vegan except for like backyard eggs and things like that. Mm-hmm. So I guess we could start with just the animal protection part of it. Mm-hmm. And we're going to kind of glaze over it. But if you want more information, we have some fact sheets on our website mm-hmm. that I'll link in the show notes. But basically, just, you know, any eggs that you... Just regular eggs, you know. It's like from the store? From the store, mm-hmm. yeah. It's, you know, the usual cruelty, cramped conditions. Yeah. The chickens are overworked to maximize profits. Mm-hmm. It's just... Artificial light used to, like, prolong the day so that they lay for longer and this, they don't have, like, seasons off. Right. Things like Textbook that. Textbook animal yeah. exploitation. Yeah. And then the male chicks are oh my gosh. of no value to the egg industry, so they are quote-unquote discarded. And again, we're going to spare the details, but if you want to know, you can just look that up. Yeah, and it's prepare your heart. Yeah, so yeah, we're, we're, we're sparing <laughs> it, but prepare yourself. Yeah. 
And then with other eggs that are labeled like cage free, free range, mm-hmm. humane, et cetera, those are all myths. Right. And this is what our fact sheet's go into more detail about how they're myths. They're not true. Right. They put those labels because they know they're gonna tug at our hearts and make us feel Oh, this is so much this is better. Right. We 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 they know that we're conscious consumers and they're gonna play to that mm-hmm. tune and they use those labels. Because they know what we think they, they're going to mean. Mm-hmm. But they have a completely different definition and mm-hmm. meaning in the real world. And for example, the cage free just means that they have access to the outside. But there's no parameters on how big that access needs to be. How much access they have that they actually move the chickens outside. None of that. Right. You know, it's it's those huge, long, like half circle buildings that are typical for chicken manufacturing. And then it's like, I don't know, a two by two square spaced out every 20 feet, 30 feet, maybe Mm -hmm. for the chickens to go outside. And then it's a, a little fenced off area outside. And it's so cramped inside that the chickens don't actually move outside on their own. Because they can't. The doorway gets too congested. Right. Exactly. They can't even make it outside. So that's just one example of how the cage free label but the the parameters in order to get that label on the packaging don't actually promote a cage free life for the animal. Exactly. So that's that's just a quick example. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. And mm-hmm. in some cases, those labels and practices are a little bit better for the chickens. That doesn't mean it's good or even right remotely ideal and healthy for them. Right. So that's why we choose to just. Avoid it altogether. Right. And then in the case of backyard chickens, again, there are definitely reasons to not eat the eggs, even from backyard chickens, because the chickens, if you leave them alone, they will eat their eggs Mm -hmm. to replenish the nutrients Mm -hmm. that they lose. Laying eggs is hard Hard, labor for a chicken. They'll eat their unfertilized eggs. Yeah, that's what I, yeah. Yeah. So if you, like, if you leave them alone, yeah. Yeah, and it's a way for them to get that calcium and other nutrients back into their system. Yeah. And I had no idea about that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, that was a whole like, wait a minute, what? Right. So people who have backyard chickens as like companion animals or what they might call pets, still not the best idea to take their eggs and eat them. Mm-hmm. It's because the chickens it's would need them. Better for the chickens if you leave them yeah. for the chickens. It, it's it's like that with honey. The honey is literally bee food. That's their whole jam. That's their yeah. whole thing. Yeah. And then it's the same. You know, nature knew what it was doing, <laughs> or whatever you believe. You know. Right. Right. So right. it's just that interesting cycle where some people are like. I just remember watching that bee documentary years and years ago with with our homeschool group for something. And everybody was like, wow, I have such an appreciation for honey. And I was just like, wow, I'm extra not going to eat honey. And they were like, oh, wow. Like it was totally different mentalities, mm-hmm. you know, and outlooks and stuff. And so when I learned that about chickens, I was just like, wait, what? That was that just opened something else new. Mm-hmm. And then it's really it's really cute. Like if you go to a sanctuary that has chickens and gives the eggs you know, quote unquote gives the eggs back to the chickens do you know what i mean i right. hate to i hate to like use that terminology but but I've, I've we've been at a sanctuary where the they have some eggs from the chickens and they like crack it and like drop it and then the chickens just flock and it's like this sweet little treat and they, it's just i think it's like the cutest thing I was, oh my gosh, that makes me so happy with how happy they are to have this treat because it, it was like a treat for them. It really was. Yeah. yeah it really is. Cute. So, so that's that was another like, oh, wow, that's, I love it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Love chickens. So yeah, just kind of in an, in an eggshell, <laughs> <laughs> wrapping up some reasons why. And then also there's the nutrition aspect of it. Right. You know, eggs are sort of marketed as this healthy protein packed Mm -hmm. you know nutrient dense this and that and it's also most people know that eggs have cholesterol Mm -hmm. and then the cholesterol is downplayed Mm -hmm. by the egg industry and and lobbyists it's fascinating just in our lifetime 
the sort of ebb and flow of egg. Mm -hmm. You know, it was this huge thing. Remember in the 80s, people would crack and drink a raw egg uh -huh. like or <laughs> mix it in with orange juice or something like I yeah just, it was wild we and just <laughs> watched the never-ending story last yeah. night in the opening scene for people who you know date that far back can yeah. remember uh he cracks an the egg dad, yeah the dad cracks an egg and puts it in the blender and our kids are like what, what? a yeah. raw egg and orange juice yeah. like yeah that was very common in the yeah 80s. and it was like it was very promoted then and then i think knowing the cholesterol it like got downgraded and it was and it like fell out of favor and then something happened lob chicken or egg lobby or something money happened yeah <laughs> and it just new new quote unquote studies came out and it's not that bad or it's good cholesterol or whatever it was i don't know but eggs came back up out of the gutter like yeah. So it's what, just been interesting in our life. What lifetime they did was that. they yeah, they designed studies to mm -hmm. have the outcomes give they evidence wanted. Yeah. that the dietary cholesterol does not impact our blood cholesterol. Right. Which were poorly designed, not well done, mm -hmm. funded by the egg industry. Yeah. You know the story. Yeah. And also people downplay the saturated fat mm -hmm. that's in eggs as well, which raises our cholesterol, which we are well aware of. Yeah. And the cholesterol content for one egg has like 70% of our daily value of Holy dietary cholesterol. Moly. I'll tell you, when I was eating scrambled eggs just for myself, I wasn't eating one egg. Yeah, who eats one egg? Maybe if you have like a hard-boiled egg right. as a snack, maybe you have just one. But right. even then... Whew, that's a lot. Right. And friendly reminder we don't need any dietary cholesterol. We right. actually don't need any. That 100% of our daily value, that's like the maximum safe amount that to get daily yeah like you shouldn't On go over that of, but right. you don't need any you need zero right. because our Be bodies make exactly. all the cholesterol we need yeah yeah so so any cholesterol you eat is on top of already what your body's making right hence why cholesterol is known to like clog arteries yeah so uh, i have a couple of fun facts from the physicians committee for responsible medicine okay. that i just wanted to share this from a, a nice little infographic they have called crack the shell surrounding egg myths and so number one did you know that one egg has the same amount of cholesterol as a big mac no right what one egg <sighs> <laughs> i just the, i mean that's the difference between like we used to put like one egg on a salad mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Com or, or or like a hard boiled egg as part of breakfast with other things compared to a Big Mac. That's the majority of your meal. Do you know what I know? And do you know what scares me is I used to love to get back in my pre before vegan days. I, lo I love to get enchiladas with a fried, fried egg, egg on, top. on top. A fried yes. egg. So the enchiladas are already in your, swimming in cheese. Yes. But and it was usually red chili beef enchiladas. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And then you fry an egg and then you put all that oil and cholesterol on top. It's scary, okay. but I just found that interesting. And then that's wild. That yeah. is wild. And then another one consuming eggs can also increase your risk of cardiovascular disease by 19%, increase your risk of colon cancer nearly five times. Oh my gosh. Increase your risk of diabetes by 68%. A lot of people only equate sugar intake with, with diabetes, diabetes or carb intake with yeah. diabetes but really it's the fat and oh cholesterol that we need to worry about and it can increase your risk of lethal prostate cancer by 81 percent 81 percent and prostate cancer is a huge and colon cancer problem mm -hmm. a huge issue especially in the in the united states and oh my gosh eggs That's huge are not helping the problem and lastly real quick we did a class on eggs years ago and i did a side-by-side -side comparison of tofu to egg because we replace egg with tofu and so much and i found mm -hmm. this just fascinating because one egg and one serving of tofu was what was compared and they have the same amount of calories 70 calories similar amount of fat the tofu has three and a half grams the egg has four and a half grams I would say that's pretty, that's kind of close in terms of grams of fat. Saturated fat, which is we have a lower daily recommended intake of saturated fat. The tofu has zero grams of saturated mm. fat. The egg has one and a half grams. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a significant mm -hmm. 
Difference cholesterol, tofu has zero Mm -hmm. because it's plant based. The egg has 215 milligrams of sodium, as we talked about. I mean, of cholesterol. And then, interestingly, sodium, for people who are watching their sodium intake, the tofu has 15 milligrams and the egg has 65 milligrams. I never would have thought of sodium in egg. Uh, Again, that's why I found this fascinating. It's like you don't think about sodium. And then what do we do with our eggs? We put more salt salt on it. (laughs) I know I did. (laughs) Who eats hard-boiled eggs without salt or scrambled eggs without salt? I don't know. Sometimes I would do my fried egg with salt. I would add salt to my fried egg. totally. And then fiber, the egg has zero because it's an animal food. Mm-hmm. Animal-based foods don't have any fiber. Tofu has a smidgen. Mm-hmm. Depends on how it's prepared. Probably less than a gram, but so it's kind of negligible. But yeah. And then the protein. Most people eat eggs for the protein. It's boosted for the protein. An egg has six grams of protein, and one serving of tofu has seven grams of protein. So, so it, yeah, so it has more. Like our friend Gabriel, the you dietitian, more, says, yeah. you get the bonus without the baggage. That's what he always says. That's awesome. That's a good way of putting it. So I was going to say, it's like you get more bang for your dietary <laughs> buck with the tofu because mm-hmm. you're getting more of what you want and less of what you don't want. Mm-hmm. So very quickly, just brushing over the reasons why mm-hmm. you might consider going egg-free or kicking eggs out of your diet mm-hmm. or if they're the last to go. Let's that last do this. step, yeah, mm-hmm. let's do it. Okay, so as we talked about, tofu is like a main, one of the main substitutes that we use. Mm-hmm. So if you are intimidated by buying tofu and not sure what to do with it, check the tofu episode, yeah. our last episode. And if you're intimidated by the soy or you think the soy might be bad for you, go back and check our soy episode with mm-hmm. the dietitian and we break all of that down for you as well there's a lot of myths there too right bad publicity that is not true right so another main ingredient is black salt Mm, yes this was game changer right if you really want that eggy taste Mm -hmm. the eggy flavor black salt will change everything yes it's also called i don't know exactly how to pronounce it kalanamak or kalanamak or yeah and it's from India. Mm-hmm. So you can find it in like World Marts, like in Albuquerque at the Tallinn Market. It's in the mm-hmm. Indian aisle. Um, guessing, you know, other similar markets in other areas. And you can also order it online if you just search black salt. Lots of mm-hmm. online markets have it. Amazon has it, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. And it's not expensive. So it's really not. Add it to your repertoire if you yes. haven't already. It is a worthy spice to add into your uh, mix there. Yeah, and the only way to describe it is it tastes like eggs. Right. <laughs> so you take like bland tofu. Uh-huh. And we like to, you know, we'll season our tofu like salt and pepper. Garlic, onion, blah, blah, blah. Whatever. Yep. And But then you just throw a little dash of black salt on it and it tastes like eggs. Yes. Yeah. Takes it up a notch. Right. And then another main ingredient slash substitute is the Just products. <laughs> just yes. egg. Comes in a bottle and it makes scrambled eggs. And then they also have egg folds, which yes. you can just pop in the microwave if you had to, but you could also cook them on the, on the on stove. The stove. Yeah, and they skillet. make, they're like, they keep, so you can make the little like scrambled egg sandwiches and stuff like that. Yeah, the folds. Interestingly, yeah. they're Mickey's like favorite thing in the world and they're Constantine's like least favorite thing in the yeah, world. Yeah, he really <laughs> I don't know likes why. the just egg in the bottle, but he thinks there's something different that they do to the folds to make it be like folds and in the microwave or something i don't know and he just he just doesn't dig it yeah but it it's wonderful for me but it's like yeah we all Mm -hmm. love it so give those a shot and that's like our main things for these recipes and foods that we're gonna talk about so one is tofu scramble which we've already Mm -hmm. alluded to and it's the easiest thing because you just kind of crumble up tofu yeah and season it and then cook it in the pan like you would scrambled eggs. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And you can season it with whatever you want. We like salt, pepper, garlic. Onion. Onion and turmeric. Yeah. Turmeric mainly to change the color. Color, yeah. Because the white tofu, it's not as appealing. You know, our eyes are part like of our color, taste buds. You yeah. Know? And so we put a little turmeric and it turns it sort of yellow like mm-hmm. scrambled egg and it looks more appealing. Mm-hmm. And we usually do veggies in our tofu scrambles. Yep, you can do any veggies you want, Mm -hmm. anything you would normally do. Green peppers, red peppers, onion, garlic. Spinach. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Spinach is a great one. Yeah. It's a good way to get some greens in the morning. And I like the texture that it adds. To yeah. It. One thing with the black salt is you put it on after, after you're done cooking. Yeah. Because if you put it in the cooking process, it cooks the flavor like cooks away. Yes. So yeah. you finish and then you sprinkle it on or you serve it and then sprinkle it on and then boom, flavor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Boom, flavor. <laughs> so another recipe that we talk about a lot is our quiche oh my gosh, recipe. Yes. This uses tofu also. And like we've said before, Mickey likes the quiche tofu better than the just egg tofu. I do. Quiche. I can't even talk. <laughs> the <laughs> You like the quiche. The tofu quiche. <laughs> you like the tofu quiche. Better than the just egg quiche. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because yeah. you can make a quiche with just egg and it's super simple. Yeah. Right? You just pour the just egg in mm-hmm. a pie crust, put Add, whatever else yep. you want to put and bake it. Bake it, yeah. But I, I have to agree with you that I like the tofu quiche better. It's more filling. It has it, like yeah. more depth. I'm not sure. It's it's. Uh, I feel like it, maybe it's a little denser. Mm-hmm. And uh, like you say, more filling. The Just Egg quiche is, is really good like in a pinch if you want something quick. quick. Love mm-hmm. it for that. It's really great. Hot for Food recently did a Just Egg quiche with puff pastry. And so we tried that and it was absolutely delicious. So that's a really good way to prepare Just Egg also. But I think I still prefer the tofu quiche in a traditional quiche pie crust. Um, it's just, a, you know, it's a little more labor intensive because you blend up the tofu and I never, and I feel like in almost all quiche recipes, I see people pre-cooking their vegetables, like sauteing them. I never saute our vegetables first. I literally blend up the tofu with the spices and everything, mix it in a bowl with the veggies that I want, and then I pour it in the pie crust and bake it. I am all about skipping steps where I can, and that is one that works. But if you want, like, like I like, I basically like a red, white, and green in the quiche, either broccoli or spinach, tomato or red pepper and onion mm-hmm. is typically what I put in our quiches. And they all work. Yeah. I've never, all of that, I've never needed to cook before. It cooks enough for our liking in the oven while it's baking. That's what I was going to say. The thing with sauteing it before, some people are all about it because it brings out a different flavor. Right. If you like the different and flavors. And they want that like flavor of like the sauteed, sauteed. or the grilled yes. vegetables. Totally understand. In the quiche. I'm not super, we're clearly not super into that. I yeah. Think I like it a little more fresh tasting. Yeah, I think it. I think that's will. a good way of doing that because I I think maybe the red pepper almost keeps a little bit of the cr- crunch. Yeah, like it's cooked enough that you can eat it and enjoy it, and it's, it's not fresh, but it's yeah, it's not raw, but it's not like a sautéed pepper. Yeah, it's hard to explain. It works out for us because it's easier that way. Exactly. So it's a nice accident that we like it that way. Exactly. So try it both ways. Mm-hmm. I would say if you're going to do like fresh garlic, you might want to saute yeah. that up. I don't know if that would cook enough. In the, in the, yeah. But everything else, even onion, mm-hmm. oddly enough, you it's would think fine. It, because you have to bake the quiche for like 45 minutes yeah. to an hour. So yeah. it's not like it's only 15 minutes and the vegetables are still raw. Like, it, yeah. It's totally going to work. Exactly. And some people, we talked about this at some point too, will even like saute the vegetables before they put them on pizza Mm -hmm. instead of just letting them bake in the oven and again that's just a preference thing yeah yeah so but the just egg in puff pastry was a really good recipe i like that a lot and that was hot for food that that i saw that recently and i don't remember if she sauteed the vegetables beforehand or not but we just we tried it and we really liked it i did her trick of putting baking soda in the just egg and the first time i think i put too much because it took it puffed up huge and it took (laughs) forever to cut to cook i had to like cut up the top crusty layer because of the just egg because it got super big and and it wasn't cooking underneath and then the next time i think i didn't put any and it cooked through just fine normal so i think i put too much I don't know if you really need it because it cooked fine without it, but I might try it again with way less. Because it would puff, yeah, to get just to get it to just to get it to sort of rise rise a little bit more. I think that's cool. So, yeah, I just like 
I think I saw a reel on Instagram and I was just like, oh, I'll remember. And then I put too much. (laughs) So classic. Definitely look at the actual recipe she has. (laughs) And then the thing, the quiche recipe, we say it's kind of labor intensive, but it's also kind of not. Right. It's more of like you have to pull out the blender and clean the blender because you have to use the blender. Yeah. But really, you're just throwing stuff in the blender Blender, and blending it and then pouring it in the crust. (laughs) <laughs> cutting up a couple vegetables i know <laughs> it's actually pretty easy. it's just if you're making your crust from scratch yeah and then you're doing the filling mm-hmm. and you're cutting and our blender is bulky and, and it starts to, it starts it to just, stack up it starts to stack up that's yeah, all so that's it's not labor intensive like lasagna might be labor intensive right it's there's it's just not a, qu- a super quick breakfast well and the other thing about it is like i said it bakes for almost an hour right so you need time yes you're not going to have breakfast on the table in 20 minutes. Right, exactly. So That's you have the to plan ahead. Quiche. That's the tofu the quiche tofu that quiche, takes so yeah. long. The puff pastry just egg quiche didn't take that long. Yeah. So, but another pro tip is you could prepare it the night before mm-hmm. and then just put it in the oven in the morning. Yes. Or you could even pre-bake it and then just throw it in the oven to heat it through right. in the morning. And then you'll have breakfast on the table in 20 minutes. Yes. So, and we've done this before, like we do it for Christmas all the time. Mm -hmm. You make the quiche the night before and then you throw it in the oven. Like the minute you wake up, it's the first thing you do. Yeah. And then as you, you know, brush your teeth, open presents. Or stockings, whatever. Whatever you're going to do. And then the quiche is ready. You're ready for breakfast. Yeah. So that might work for some people also. Mm -hmm. It's a good prep one. Mm -hmm. So another go-to recipe is egg salad. Yes. We just had this like yesterday. Yeah. And we've talked about a lot. Our, our teenager, Constantine, can make it. He's been making it for years and years. Yes. Yeah. About time to teach Fortune how to make it. Yeah. And it's just tofu. Yeah. <laughs> like you would make egg salad, however you would make egg salad, but replace the hard-boiled eggs with tofu. tofu. And top and it then, off with some black salt. Yeah. Leave everything else the same. Add some black salt. Right. So typically you'd put like maybe mayo, mustard. Some people put like chopped celery or onion or pickles whatever do it exactly the same way Mm -hmm. but swap the tofu for the hard boiled egg mm -hmm. and swap vegan mayo for whatever mayo Mm -hmm. and that's it yeah i like to like cut the tofu in cubes Mm -hmm. because then some of it kind of gets mashed up and some of it stays almost like little cubes and that reminds me of like the little egg whites the little like hard boiled egg whites yeah so you could also just mash it Mm-hmm. Just to just crumble be it quicker. up. If you don't mm-hmm. have a preference, it goes super quick, and it's really easy. It is super easy, and yummy, mm-hmm. and it, it's you know sandwiches, lettuce boats, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then just the other day, I said, "What if we used tofu and black salt in a salad? Mm-hmm. Like we used to put hard boiled egg in a salad." Yeah, and because like that was salad. I loved hard boiled egg in salad. I don't know why we hadn't thought of it before or tried I it. I said that too. I was like, me too. That was my like, favorite thing. It was, thing. yes. Hard boiled egg, croutons, some ranch, some sunflower seeds, the vegetable. Like, it was so good. Yeah. I, when I was a teenager, I think, I went to eat at Super Salad one time and literally walked, asked for a refund and walked out because they had ran out of hard boiled <laughs> egg. <laughs> I was like, that ruined my salad. That ruined I'm not my salad. I don't want it. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. I'm so not. why had we not thought of it? Yeah. Just cut up some tofu. Yep. Sprinkle some sprinkle black salt. Sprinkle some black salt and... And put it on your salad. Genius. Yeah. I might add a little... I don't know. I'd probably try it like that first. And then if I felt like it needed some other sort of spices to it, I might add a little bit other spices. But my usual, I'm always garlic, onion, salt. Pepper sometimes. That's I wouldn't like do base. pepper, but garlic, onion, salt. Mm-hmm. So I might do that, but I would just try the black salt on the tofu first and put it like it was a hard-boiled egg in a salad. Yeah, I like that idea. Mm-hmm. And then we also have a recipe on our website for fried eggs. Yes. For people who might miss those. Now, it's going to be a little different. It's not yes. really like exactly like a fried egg. And if you... Go, I feel like, because we went a long time without fried egg. We did. And then when we found this recipe and tweaked it and, you know, adapted it to make it easier, obviously. Yeah. (laughs) And for like more common ingredients that we have, that most people have, it really was a game changer. It It really felt like we, I I felt like I had fried eggs back in my life. 
you can add them to things like, you know, put a fried because, egg on top of your enchiladas yeah. again. Yeah. Well, this was a game changer for you because you could have huevos rancheros. Yes. Again. Yep. And that was huge for you. Yeah. That was huge. To and this then, day, it's like one of the best things. Yeah. And then the other thing that made it really fantastic is because it's 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 basically tofu and then you make a sauce and we call it eggy sauce but it's like the yolk but like it's meant to be the egg oak. yolk yeah. yeah and it's meant to be the fried egg yolk where it runs and stuff and you saute up your fry up your tofu season that and then you pour the sauce on it game changer was you add some green chili you get your papas you mm-hmm. you know like you mm-hmm. you do your papas and maybe with peppers and a little bit of cheese and then you do your fried egg and the sauce and green chili oh my word Mm -hmm. oh yes like the best breakfast oh it's so good Mm -hmm. it is so good and the original recipe is from hot for food so you can you know see how we tweaked it but i we basically just you know simplified it simplified (laughs) it for ourselves yeah Mm -hmm. because because why not yeah sometimes you'll have a little bit of the eggy sauce the mm-hmm. yolk left over and what i've done sometimes if it's just like you know two tablespoons or something uh just make toast the next day and dunk your toast mm-hmm. in it you know i used to like use the mm-hmm. toast to like sop up the egg yolk yes mm-hmm. yes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then it's really fantastic as like a sauce in a breakfast burrito oh yes that's the other place it's super fantastic in yes mm-hmm you could put anything in your breakfast burrito and then drizzle, drizzle that. Drizzle that. Mm. Yeah. And then we have our tofu breakfast bake. That's like tofu and hash brown and veggies. And then, oh my gosh, bomb.com when you add the eggy mm. sauce and, and green, green chili. chili. Mm. Oh, that's another one that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I ask for it like all the time. Yeah. It's so good. Teen asks for it a lot too. Mm-hmm. So I'm so, drooling. Yeah. So the eggy sauce was a game changer. And I think, I feel like I've been seeing somewhere that like i think like an actual vegan fried egg with runny yolk is coming oh yeah they're working on it i think i've been seeing something Mm -hmm. that looks more from like vegan uh foodie pages that i Mm -hmm. follow on instagram i don't remember who it was in my feed because i follow a couple of people but I feel like somebody shared a video or something and it was a fully vegan page. And I'm like, why does that look like an actual fried egg? And it was like a vegan thing with like you break the yolk and it runs mm-hmm. with the white around. So maybe that's coming too, which would be really interesting. When Just Egg first came out, it was pretty expensive and it took us a long time to try it because it was expensive. And then the price dropped. I think it got into Walmart. And so that was made it a little more affordable for us. So. I kind of anticipate the same thing, so hopefully like that. But our eggy sauce for us does the trick. It hits all those high notes that we wanted in a fried egg. Mm -hmm. And so yummy. Well stated. Thanks. And then one more recipe, you know, breakfast thing that we recently discovered and we're like, why haven't we done this all our lives? Is using just egg to make French toast. Oh my gosh. I What the... (laughs) I'm like, you know what it was is I was so obsessed with just egg for scrambled eggs for so long because I missed it for years. It's been like, it's been like we went, fortune's almost 10. We went seven years. I had no scrambled eggs. That's probably what it was. And then I finally got to the point where I'm just like, okay, I think like. What else can we do with just egg? Yeah. Like I think I, I, I hit the wall on the scrambled egg part. I don't need to have it as often as I had been having it. I can try other things. <laughs> Hence why we tried the just egg quiche. And then I did French toast the other day. And it was so easy, so delicious, just like you remember, you know, non-vegan French toast. Yep. Like, and you just, you use the just egg as the same you would. You add a little milk, you add your vanilla, your cinnamon. One of the recipes I saw called for sugar in the mixture, the eggy mixture. I didn't do that because we are, we put syrup on it. Yeah, like I, don't I guess need extra sometimes sugar. people do that, but we don't. Yeah. But we don't because we, we put syrup on it. I guess if, mainly- you're, if you're doing like, like fruit stuff on it maybe you put a little bit more sweet i could see that in the mix but we didn't you just treat it the same as you would have regular eggs Mm -hmm. and then you dunk your toast and fry it up and it was easy and it was so yummy and yes because the thing about thing about vegan french toast y'all is that there are some recipes out there like 
just egg aside, right? There's recipes out there where you use chia mm-hmm. and you make the almost like chia pudding, and then but it's you not completely dunk congealed. your bread in it, right? Mm-hmm. The thing about it is your bread has to be like super crispy, hearty, thick. Yes. It can't be like soft bread. Right. It has to be like dried out. You have to at least set it out overnight. Like we would get like a hearty bread and slice it and set it out overnight to like get harder. And then even sometimes it might not be enough and it's kind of falling. It's just like Uh, it would it would it would fall apart. Like let's be real. Let's tell people the truth. Yeah. (laughs) If if you and if you would just buy even a hearty sliced bread like Dave's Killer Bread like we always buy. Uh That doesn't stand a chance with the vegan. It really didn't. French toast recipes. That one would have to sit out for a couple days to to sort of dry out before we could do French toast that wasn't falling apart. Yeah. And you being the innovative person you are, you would you figured out doing French toast bake. Bake, yeah. Because that sort of dries it. That's it's going to fall apart. Just break the bread up. Yes. Pour the French toast batter on it in mm-hmm. a baking dish and then bake it. And bake it. So it doesn't get too juicy it doesn't fall apart it tastes yes. really good and it was great yeah and it's not the french toast that we grew up on right you know what i mean right. so as good as that is it's a great thing i still want it and like it mm-hmm. it'll still be a regular rotation right. for us because it's so good and this just egg french toast was so good because it was like childhood yes. french toast and we just use our dave's killer bread yep no special drying out or preparation nope. that's what i was say like as a kid with the egg with With the egg French toast, you could use like the cheapest, fluffiest white white bread bread. on planet Earth and it would just whatever crisp right up, you know, right through all of that. That's why I would get so frustrated with the vegan French toast, especially early on. I felt that too. Like that's why I stopped making it because it was so disappointing. Yeah. And it was, I am sometimes I'm dramatic about food. It was also upsetting (laughs) because when you want French toast, when I want something in particular with food placements are just not the same (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know something doesn't work out if i had my heart set on it it's 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 disappointing and i feel that Mm -hmm. and if if you don't have those experiences i'm jealous because sometimes (laughs) i frustrate myself with it so it just wasn't the same yes and so the just egg french toast really took us back to our childhood it it was perfection yeah it was so good and I want more now. Yeah. Yeah, it was. I'm so happy to have that. And then I'm sure you were happy to have another thing with just egg. That yeah. wasn't the scrambled because just egg. I'm usually not you one guys to are kind of over that. I'm not one to get over foods or be sick of them. I'm always like, I could eat this every day and this every day. Just egg is not something I can eat every or day. Or I could have this, you know, three times a week, blah, blah, blah. Not anymore. Not I tapped him egg. out. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I found that limit for him, y'all. I found it. So when you were wanting to branch out, I was like, yes, yes. Yeah. let's branch. Well, and I told you to try, and you'll have to do it next, omelets with Just mm-hmm. Egg. I think it'd be really easy to make omelets. And that was like your favorite, favorite, favorite thing with eggs. Yeah. So that that's another good thing to do with Just Egg also. On the horizon. Mm-hmm. So... All right, let's talk about baking. Yes. Before we close out. So I want to say, even before we went vegan, I would bake with alternatives to egg because there was a time before we went vegan that I don't know, maybe it was during bird flu. I think it was that because the eggs, just the prices were going through the roof. They were so expensive. And so I found that I don't want to bake with egg. I would rather have hard boiled eggs and scrambled <laughs> eggs and quiche and, you know, those. And scrambled egg, eggs yeah, and scrambled eggs. Yeah. Those egg based dishes where you eat the egg as opposed to baking with the egg. So I have been baking with egg alternatives for a very long time, mm-hmm. That's even true. before we went vegan. And so that was just an easy, nothing changed there for me, really. Yeah, that's true. So it can still help you save money, especially with rising food, food costs. costs. Yeah, It's cheaper to do some of these alternatives because our main alternative for baking is flax eggs. Yes. Where you do ground flax seed Mm -hmm. and you mix one tablespoon of ground flax seed with three tablespoons of water you Mm -hmm. let it sit until the flax seed soaks up all the water and it gets this like little congeals congealed and it's the binder and then you add that to your 
just whenever you'd add the egg mm -hmm. and it does the, it's a binder exactly yeah so and some recipes will do one to one one flax egg to one water and I'll follow that because their recipe is tried and true. But in general, for myself, I, that's how I make a flax egg. One tablespoon of ground flax and then three tablespoons of water. Mm -hmm. And just anything that called for an egg, our pancake mixture, any of that. And then sometimes I even cheat. And I do this mainly in like our pancakes is I don't make the flax egg. I just throw the flax in with the dry ingredients. And then when I mix the liquid in, I might add a little bit extra milk because it need the flax because eventually the flax will start to do its thing and congeal even just sitting and then your batter gets thicker. Mm -hmm. So I kind of I'll just mix it in and then I just sort of let it sit for a couple minutes, kind of like while the pan is heating up or something. Or, you know, if I'm making like the the little fruit thing that we put on top sometimes or little fruit mm -hmm. juicy thing, you know, I'll cut up the fruit or something to allow the flax to do its thing without needing to make the flax egg beforehand. Right. So. Make it so e that's, easier and more efficient. Yeah. It's a little a little trick I've learned works OK. Mm -hmm. And then you can also do chia. Yes. Eggs. Chia, quote unquote, chia eggs. Same Idea. Same idea. It's the binder. That this worked. It works well in cakes, we found. Yeah. My sister makes cakes using chia. And when she does the lemon cake, we just call it lemon poppy, poppy seed, seed cake because yeah. <laughs> you can see the little... The chia. Chia. Yeah. And it looks like poppy seed. So it does. So if you tell people it's lemon poppy seed cake, cake. they don't think anything, anything of it. Anything of it. Because if you told them they're chia seeds, they might be like, ew, what's what? that? You know, it gets in your yeah. head. Funny yeah. side note, everybody likes the lemon poppy seed cake. Mm -hmm. That's really chia seed. Yeah. And then, and then the chia is the one that we use when I do the French toast bake. Mm -hmm. And because... It acts as a binder. It, you know, soaks into the bread and nutrients, blah, 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 all that stuff. Yeah. And that's the fun fact is these replacers are more nutrient dense mm -hmm. than the eggs are. They add yes. more fiber. They add your omega-3s. All the bonus without the baggage. Yep. And then there are some recipes, too, that you can just omit egg altogether. Mm -hmm. And there's recipe baking recipes that don't even call for it. Our depression cake mm -hmm. doesn't call for any kind of binder like that right? or any egg replacer. So sometimes if you have a recipe and it calls for eggs, just put vegan in front of the name of the recipe in a Google search and you'll, you'll find replacement recipes. And either they'll omit something or they use the flax or whatever. Yeah. And there's even other things that you can use to substitute and depends on what you need the eggs for, for in the recipe. Because right. like the depression cake, the different ingredients obviously offset whatever you would need the eggs for. Because in baking, eggs can either be for binding, for leavening, mm -hmm. and or for moisture. Mm. And so that's where you have to figure out what is the egg doing, doing in this recipe yes. and then what can I use to replace it. So I had done this research a while back for this blog post on vegan su swaps and subs mm -hmm. and so i'll share that link too because there's more information if you want to go deeper Perfect. in the weeds about egg substitutes and it links to another great article as well because if you just need eggs for moisture then you can use applesauce or pumpkin mm, yes and pumpkin oh my and gosh we those found are, that too those are so good in breads yeah sometimes <sighs> you substitute pumpkin for the egg because yeah. it's just the moisture, moisture. you need mm -hmm. and then it comes out perfect and also has the pumpkin yeah flavor Boom. And all the nutrients that you get from pumpkin. Yeah. So yeah. it's like bonus times two. Or same thing with the applesauce. And then for moisture too, you can also use soft or silken tofu mm, as the yes. egg replacer. And then for binding, you could use a mashed banana or an avocado or cornstarch. Mm. And with our pumpkin pie yeah. recipe... It's a combination of tofu and cornstarch. Yes. Probably because the eggs add moisture and binding. Yeah. And, and so that's how you get around that. That's how you yeah. do that. Yeah. Mm, I love it. So if you, yeah, like Mickey said, if you just want to find the vegan recipe with the replacement, you can find it. Mm -hmm. But if you're like wanting to recreate your family recipe or your own recipe right. with your own replacement, this is where you can... Play around with different Play things. Play around with yeah. different substitutes and figure out your own. Yeah, I think that's a great I, that's a great tip is to figure out what the egg is doing in your recipe and then find a vegan replacement 
for what it's doing Mm -hmm. and then play around with it because that's how a lot your sister does a lot of her recipes that's Mm -hmm. how i've done recipes and then we find one that works and oh boy do we stick to it Mm -hmm. and that's why i like to share our recipes with people because yeah. they're tried and true, especially for New Mexico and the high altitude. altitude yes. Because that's another thing. Because with the pumpkin pie, there was a, a recipe, but it was actually an article with four different recipes with four different egg replacers. And that's why my sister tried all four all of four them. Of them. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I guess the altitude, like, whenever we travel, I'm like, man, beans only take like 30 minutes here? What is that? No, Because in New Mexico, it's close to an hour because of the altitude. Yeah, you sea level people can bust out pinto beans beans in no no time. time. We have to plan ahead for that. Oh my gosh, yes. (laughs) It's such a plan. Anyway. So yeah, that's an overview of baking without eggs. Mm -hmm. And I'll share that blog post for more info, more in depth. And also... There's also a product called Egg Replacer. Yes. Like it's literally <laughs> just called Egg Replacer. Mm-hmm. It's an energy brand. Yeah. And the box looks like it hasn't been updated since the 70s. That's, from, that's like my the favorite image. joke. Like, it's can you get the Egg Replacer, the seven, 1970s Egg Replacer? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it literally looks like it's straight it's off the set yes. of a movie based in the 70s. It's so great. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and that works nicely too. We've we've done that in some recipes. We haven't used it in a long time, but that was one of the first things we tried. And I think your sister and mm-hmm. some of her baking uses that for instead. like rolls and yeah. bread and stuff like that. And yeah. and on the box it tells you how to use it yeah. as a replacer for different I, I recipes. Might, and I stuff. think it has recipes on the box. Yeah. And then I, when I was looking for, I was trying to remember what the brand was, so I was googling egg replacer, and there's a whole oh. bunch now. Yeah. Like energy was. The, they're like the original. the original. They go way back, but now there's all kinds of different ones. So you could try just one of those. Just read the instructions, read mm-hmm. the reviews, you know, mm-hmm. see what works for people. But I wanted to mention that the Energy 1970s, yes, 1970s box is the one that works for us. Yeah, that, <laughs> that one's worked good too. For us in the past. So I think that was a good. I think we hit all the high high notes there on life after eggs. Mm-hmm. If there's something we missed, reach out. We'll respond. If you have a tip or something that works really fantastic for you, please share also. We're We'd always into know. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe we'll share any any new tips we get on the next episode before we dive into that topic. Mm-hmm. That was a whole lot of information. I'm feeling a little fried and hopefully your brains aren't too scrambled. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> All right. That I'm done. dad gene is so strong in you. Goodness gracious. Uh, I'm done. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Have a good one. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time. (laughs) Thanks for joining us. We release new episodes every two weeks. You can always email us at plantbased at apnm.org or visit our website at apnm.org forward slash plantbased for classes, recipes, and more resources. See you in two weeks.